The last type of growth and decay that's going to be asked on an AT test is what's referred to as logistic growth, and some books call it bounded growth. The idea is most things don't actually grow exponentially. They do to a point, but then there is a limit. There is something called what I, what's called a carrying capacity if we're looking at a population where the environment just can't support after a certain number of species are alive. Or we look at something like spreading of a disease or spreading of a rumor. The idea is there's only so many people that actually could be exposed to the disease or could be hearing the rumor. And these are all situations of what's called logistic growth. The first thing that you have to be able to do on these problems is just recognize the model of logistic growth. So the first thing you're looking at here on the screen are the top two equations. These are some of the ways that logistic growth is presented. Uh, there are a lot of questions on in AP environments that you don't actually have to do a full just a growth problem that we'll do here in a second. You just have to understand what the uh, the equations mean and what the values of the different variables represent. So what you're looking at, the first two equations are two just different examples of how logistic growth can be presented. Uh, the biggest thing is that your L value that you see in each equation, this is your carrying capacity or the idea of what is the most that could actually be supported by an environment or what is the most people that could be exposed to a disease or a rumor. A lot of times you'll be asked a question where it's in that form and you're just kind of interpreting. So when you look down here at the bottom of the screen, this is, here's an example of a question that could be asked. And it's a very short question. It looks way com more complex than it actually ends up being. So we have this dp over dt equals kp times 1 minus p over 500. And the question is, if that's the differential equation, what would happen to p as we go to infinity? And the idea is, if you understand that this is a logistic growth model, and this is your carrying capacity, then what that means is over time your population is going to go to 500. So it is nothing more than saying my population will go towards 500. If you think about what we talked about in class, visually this is what a logistic growth model looks like. You look something like this and then you flatten out and you're flattening out at your carrying capacity. So once you can recognize that's 500, it's pretty easy to go through this without really doing any work. The second question is saying, okay, well, what, at what point, at what population will, uh, is the population growing the fastest? And we also talked about this a little bit visually. This is when the population is going to grow the fastest. It's kind of a point of inflection on our graph. The idea is the population starts growing very rapidly. It actually starts out as an exponential growth where it's increasing at an increasing rate. Once we get to that point, then it continues to increase, but it's increasing at a decreasing rate. We're slowing down because we're getting closer and closer to that carrying capacity. And we can very quickly find that value because it is always your carrying capacity divided by 2. We have a nice symmetric graph here. So since we know the carrying capacity is 500, if we take 500 divided by 2, then in this particular situation, and we don't even know what the population is referring to, but in this situation, my population will be growing the fastest when it reaches 250, because that is half of the carrying capacity. After that point, your population is still increasing, but it really slows down. So you're looking at kind of the rate of the rate. The next piece is actually going through a problem. So when you take your quiz, you're going to have to do a little bit of both. You're going to have to interpret, which is what we were just talking about. Those are very quick problems if you understand the form. And then you're going to actually have to go through and do a logistic growth. Now, the nice thing about these is I will give you the major formulas, which you can see next to the word given, uh, which gives you the logistic growth formula and then how we find the L. Um, how we find, excuse me, the A, which is one of the uh, variables in the logistic growth equation or one of the constants. So here's a problem where we're talking about a disease spreading. We mentioned in class the main situations where you have logistic growth is when you're having a population growth where it is capped at a certain amount that the population can handle, when you have an outbreak of a, a disease that is spreading, or when you have a rumor spreading. All of these things cannot grow indefinitely. We have some sort of cap. So here's a disease spreading one, a real uplifting problem to look at here. We have a chickenpox outbreak. I guess somebody wasn't getting vaccinated. So we have an outbreak that's going spreading around a college dorm. The dorm houses 800 students. That 800 is very important. That is your L. That is your carrying capacity because we can't get more people sick than they're there, that are actually there. On the first day of the outbreak, we have 10 students initially diagnosed. That is going to be our P sub zero, our initial population with the disease. And all the students get quarantined in the dorm, meaning it cannot spread outside of this. We have 800 is our maximum people that could ever be infected. After three days, 28 students are infected. We want to figure out how many are going to be infected by the end of the week, which is going to be the full seven days. So we start off by using the formulas that are given to find your A value. So I actually start there, even though this is the first one I write was the P. I first need to figure out A. 
A is going to be equal to your carrying capacity, which is 800, minus your initial population, so in this case it's the 10 students that were initially infected, divided by that initial population, and we get an A of 79. Now I'm going to put it into my major equation here, my P equals, carrying capacity is 800, over 1 plus, your A is 79, E to the negative KT. Just like any type of other growth or decay problem we're working with, first we need to figure out your K value, and that's where that first piece of information comes from. We have three, after three days, we have 28 students affected. So 28 would now be my population, and I'm going to plug a 3 in for time, so 1 plus 79e to the negative 3k. Cross multiply, so think of it, this is over 1, we get 28, I'm not going to distribute, it's easier if we leave it in front of the parentheses. We're going to divide by 28, divide by 28. Here's where you really start doing a lot in your calculator. So we have 1 plus 79 e to the negative 3k equals 800 divided by 28, which I'm keeping on my calculator. It's around 20 and a half, 28.57 and so on. Subtract 1, divide by 79, and again, here is where you can really start doing most of the calculation on your calculator and not writing nearly as much down. We're going to take the natural log of both sides. We're going to divide both sides by negative 3. In the end, we end up getting a k value of around 0 0.3508. Again, I'm storing that value just so I have it dependent, so no matter what they ask, I'm ready for that. But I, it is nice to write down, you found K, and at least write the first three digits down. We know that we're storing the whole thing so we don't have any error later. Now we want to go back to the problem and figure out how many students are going to be infected after the seven day period. So back to my P equals, we still have 800 on top, 1 plus 79E e to the, this negative value, so it is a negative KT, so negative K times 7. So on my calculator, what I did is I just took the k value that was there, I multiplied by negative 7, I then take e to that power, then I multiply by 79, then I add 1 to it, so again, I'm not really writing a lot down, but I'm kind of going one stroke at a time on my calculator, then take 800 divided by what I get, and I end up getting a population of 102.9, they will almost always ask you to round to the nearest whole number, because we are oftentimes dealing with people in these problems, so after a week, we will have 103 students infected with the chicken pox. The idea is it can never be above my carrying capacity because I only have 800 students that could potentially have even been infected because we have quarantined the building. So something, if you get an answer of like 1,000 students, you know something went wrong because we can never go above that carrying capacity. Uh, if, if it asks a question as far as how, when would the rate of infection be growing the fastest, it would be when we reach half of our carrying capacity. So once we reach 400 students, at that point it starts to slow down. We don't have as many students that haven't been infected yet. These questions, this is a great example of logistic growth. You can have the exact same type of question if you're trying to spread a rumor as opposed to if you're trying to spread a disease. You can also have one if you're just trying to grow a population. When you're introducing a particular species into an area, you know the carrying capacity for that particular area is a certain number of species. It will grow very quickly until we get ha to half of that. Then the rate uh, that will slow down until you eventually top off and never go above that carrying capacity.